Good evening and welcome. Tonight we're going to be going over the history and geography of the Philippines. And as you can see here, the Philippines is a very long island chain, a big archipelago, so I kind of have to prop this up in an awkward position to get it all on camera for you, or at least as much of the Philippines as possible, so apologize for the weird angle. Apologize if you're watching this and you live down here on like the Cosby or so and can't really see yourself. Big apologies. The cat just woke up, so if he interrupts in a couple minutes, that's why he's just wanting attention. But we're here to talk about the Philippines. First I'll go over its geography, then I'll give you a very brief history lesson, and then we'll flip through this book and I'll show you some cool pictures. So as you can see, like I already kind of said, the Philippines are a big archipelago or island chain. There are about 7,640 islands in the Philippines. Only around 2,000 are inhabited. And since it is an island nation, it doesn't have any land borders. So, let me point with my pencil here. It does border the Philippine Sea over here, part of the Pacific Ocean the South China Sea to its west over here. Down here we have the Sulu Sea, and down here you can't really see is the Celebes Sea. Um, let's go over its main region. So, the Philippines has three central regions, I suppose. The first would be Luzon, which is up here. There's a couple tiny islands up here. I couldn't get in the shot, so again, my apologies, but um, Luzon is dominated by the main island of Luzon. It's here where we see the capital city of Manila. Manila reminds me a lot of Los Angeles in that um, there's just a lot of major cities here that mesh into one big city, even though they are separate. It's known as Metro Manila. Quezon City you see here is technically the largest city in the Philippines. Luzon is also home to Mount Pinatubo, which you can see right here. It's a very large volcano that had a very famous eruption in the 90s, but we'll go over that in its history. Um, being where it is in the world on the Ring of Fire, the Philippines are incredibly volcanic. There are about 53 active volcanoes, or presumed to be active volcanoes, on the Philippines. Um, and therefore, it's a very mountainous place. There are two big mountain ranges here on Luzon. The one that goes down here is known as the Cordillera Range. And there are some coastal mountains here, the Sierra Madre Range. Which means right in the middle here is a nice big valley where you can find the longest river in the Philippines that flows out through here. It is the Cagayan River. There's also the largest lake in the Philippines on this island, right here. It is Lake Laguna da Bay, Dubai. Lake Laguna da Bay, I believe. Anyway, the second main region of the Philippines would be Visayas, which is here in the middle. All of these islands you see here, with the main region being Cebu City, here on the island of Cebu. There's some really beautiful sights here in this region. Um, as you can imagine, being where it is, there's lots of rainforest in the Philippines. Um, a lot of it's in danger, deforestation, what have you, but there's still lots of beautiful forests and waterfalls and things like that you find in the jungles. But there are some neat things, like here on the island of Palawan. Right here you see Puerto Princesa. There, there's an underground river awesome. And over here is the Tupataba Coral Reefs, which is one of the, um, how do I describe it? Like, one of the best thriving coral reefs in the world? As long as it remains protected, then it's fine. Um, it is, you know, always in danger as all coral reefs in the world are. Um, but, anyway, moving on. The lower region is known as Mindanao which would be named after its largest island, Mindanao. The biggest city on Mindanao is Davao City. And right next to it, we have the largest, or highest point, I should say, in the Philippines, Mount Apo. 
It is a presumed to be active volcano. We don't know if it'll ever erupt. And down here you can see at least part of the Sulu Archipelago. Let me go like this. The Sulu Archipelago, uh, which we'll talk about in its history, so we'll come back here. It's a very interesting region. Also over here you can't really see are the Spratly Islands which the Philippines claims, um, let me just read you the little note, you can't see it. It's like right here, my pointer's on it. I gotta see some, anyway, all right, it says, the scattered islands and reefs called the Spratly Islands are claimed by Brunei, China, Malaysia, the Philippines, Taiwan, and Vietnam. The Spratlys possess rich fishing grounds and potential oil. So that would be why so many countries are trying to claim it, but anyway get into its history. So the history of the Philippines um, is pretty long and complex. I mean like every country in the world. So like I always say, this is a brief summation of its history. I'm going to gloss over certain things. Um, definitely gloss over some horrifying things that happen in its history. Um, but it's mostly just going to be a big overview. So don't expect a very detailed deep dive into the history. So Starting off in prehistory, the first um, bone that was found of a hominid was the Kayao Caveman, which was found right about up here or so. They found his toe bone, and he would have lived there between 50 to 67,000 years ago. Um, but the first actual Homo sapiens skeleton that was found was Tabon Man. He was found right up here near Manila, and he could have lived any time between 47,000 to 10,000 years ago. In 2200 BCE, the first Austronesians arrived in what is now the Philippines. It's presumed that there was a land bridge that, um, probably from Malaysia down here, Indonesia, maybe even from China, it's not really sure, but those people assimilated with the people who were living here and created the ancient prehistorical culture, which there were many of actually. There wasn't just one big one. There are lots of small little ones all throughout the islands here. Um, a lot is known about them, but also not a lot is known about them. Not a lot of the details, but we do know the basics of their histories, which from what we know is very interesting. Um, we do know that um, all the cultures didn't really interact with each other. There were a couple uh, wars, but not like major, major wars like you know, we imagine wars are today. They did definitely trade with the Chinese. Jade has been found throughout the islands um, in the ancient sites. And they did interact with the Mahapajit Empire down here in Indonesia, Malaysia, Southeast Asian mainland over there. And they were the ones who brought Islam to the islands, so it was mostly through the southern islands here, particularly in the Sulu Archipelago, where um, today is still a very Islamic-centered um, region. So, in 1521, Ferdinand Magellan arrived. He was circumnavigating the globe, trying to find, you know, a better passage around the globe, and he wound up over here in the Philippines, where he was killed at the Battle of Mactan, on the island of Cebu, but he did claim the islands for Spain, and Spain stuck with that. Many other Spanish explorers came to try to develop the Philippines, and they named the Philippines after, um, eventually King Philip II. He wasn't king at the time, but anyway. Um, the most important explorer would have been Miguel Lopez de Legazpi, who arrived from Mexico, from the Spanish territories over there in 1565. He was the one to really get the whole colonization thing rolling in the islands. In 1571, Spanish Manila became the capital of the Spanish East Indies. So obviously the Spanish left a lot of their culture and what have you behind here in the Philippines. Um, but in particular, they brought Catholicism to the Philippines, which is still the major religion in the islands today. Um, yeah, many, many Catholic missionaries 
came here and they did conflict with the Islamic population down here in the south. It sparked the Spanish Moro conflict. Moros is what they called the people here. You know, in Spain they had the Moors. Here are the Moros. Um, a conflict which technically hasn't really ended. I mean, the whole warfare aspect of it has, but there's still a huge movement for uh, independence in the islands down here for an independent Islamic nation. Um, but there was a big independence movement throughout the Philippines in the late 1800s. In 1892, a man named Andres Bonifacio created um, a sort of underground military that was pro-independence. There is also a man named Jose Rizal, who was very educated, very beloved in the islands, who promoted um, the concept of independence from the Spanish, and because of that, he was executed in 1896, and that really kicked things off. It really radicalized the people of the Philippines, created a whole revolution, and um, the leader of that revolution was named Emilio Aguinaldo. He is the one that declared independence from Spain, even though it wasn't recognized. Um, meanwhile, across the ocean in the U.S. and in the Caribbean over in Cuba, which Spain was controlling, an American ship, the USS Maine, exploded. And the United States eventually blamed Spain for that. Spain said it wasn't them. It sparked the Spanish-American War in 1898, which the Americans wound up winning. So, in exchange for a big chunk of money, Spain gave them Guam, Puerto Rico, and the Philippines. So the Philippines came under American control, which people thought, oh great, you know, they're Americans, they're going to allow us to have our independence, and America said no. So that sparked the, um... Philippine American War, and um, yeah, the Americans won that war also. Um, but in 1935, the United States declared the Philippines a commonwealth and promised that independence would come within the next decade, and we're making a lot of big strides toward it, you know, electing presidents and representation and setting up an American style democracy to run itself here in the Philippines. However, World War II was right around the corner. Um, Japan actually bombed the Philippines immediately after their success at Pearl Harbor, and they invaded in early 1942. They set up a puppet government to control the Philippines, and this is when we get a lot of the very horrific stories that came out of this occupation. It's estimated that about a million Filipinos died, not to mention, you know, all the American soldiers who were captured. Um, and again, just glossing over this, not going into detail, but the most famous of these would have been the Bataan Death March. But we really don't need to get into that. In 1945, the Americans, led by General Douglas MacArthur with um, Australian allies, led a massive, massive naval battle up here in the bay, and by August 1945, they had won back the Philippines from the Japanese, and the United States recognized independent Philippines in 1946. Um, the, the new government was off to a rocky start. Um, a rebellion against the Japanese, known as the Hook Balahop, um, had emerged to, you know, fight back against the occupation, and they also fought back against the new independent Filipino government. They were eventually defeated by President Ramon Magsaysay, um, who was a very, very beloved leader who very fortunately was killed in a plane accident. Um, so I really noticed in my research of the Philippines how, um, Politics really follows a pattern of the Philippines in an economic low, brought up by a a very beloved, powerful leader who um, eventually, once they step down, um, wind up getting replaced by someone who takes advantage of all of that prosperity and goes back down and then eventually brought back up by another leader. So eventually the one who brought it back down 
would have been Ferdinand Marcos. He was elected president in 1965, and when he was nearing the end of his term in 1972, he declared martial law. And um, that was mainly because there was a lot of criticism about him about uh, his rampant corruption, which was definitely going on. Um, but he was supported by the United States because, of course, the United States was very worried about communism in this corner of the world. And they were supporting anyone who wasn't going to implement a communist regime. So even if it meant, you know, helping out a dictator suppress his people and take advantage of the economy and steal from it, etc., um, so he declared martial law in order to remain in power. Um, that all came to a major head in 1983. There was a politician named Benigno Aquino, who was a political prisoner because he was very outspoken against Marcos. Um, he had left the Philippines to have a heart surgery in the United States, and when he came back, he was assassinated on the tarmac. Um, that sparked a massive massive protest movement against Ferdinand Marcos. He planned a very sudden election in 1986, which he, of course, won, and it was deemed extremely fraudulent. All of this led up to the creation of the People Power Revolution, and they eventually got Marcos out of power, and he fled the country to Hawaii. And... Corazon Aquino, Benigno Aquino's widow, was elected president, and she was a very beloved figure. She was known as Cory, and um, really turned around the Philippines after all of that oppression. In the 1990s is when we see a long chain of very devastating natural disasters, as there tends to be in this day and age of global warming, but, you know, massive, massive earthquake. What did they have? I think there's a picture in here, yeah. It was like a 7.8, I want to say, something like that, in 1990. And then, of course, the 1991 eruption of Mount Pinatubo, which was so massive that all of the ash in the atmosphere actually slightly lowered the temperature of the Earth. It was a big, big eruption. It's the second biggest eruption in the modern age, honestly. As of today, um, I would say that in my personal opinion, I suppose, that um, the Philippines is sort of in a down, considering that their current president is Rodrigo Duterte. He was elected in 2016, and he's a very brash, very outspoken, unapologetic kind of politician. Um, and his big thing is the war on drugs, and in order to combat it, he um, approves of, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't condemn them, but he doesn't acknowledge that he controls them, which, anyway, we're not going to get into that. Um, there are basically death squads that commit extrajudicial killings of anyone suspected of dealing drugs, basically. So they can just decide to kill whoever they want and say, oh, they were selling drugs, even if there is no evidence of it whatsoever. Uh, we won't know the outcome of this until he is removed from his office when his term is up next year in 2022. Um, but it's estimated that there's at least thousands to tens of thousands of people who have been murdered because of his regime, among other many other horrible things that we're not going to get into. So, um, is it coming? Yep. So... Yeah, here comes the cat to ruin everything as usual. Thanks for... I know, it's a weird setup, kitty. I'm sorry. Thank you, cat. Okay. He has to do this every single time I set up, and he didn't when I started, so here he is now. Cat, it's it's time to flip through the book. I really appreciate the, the transition from, you know, a depressing ending into a, a cute one, but... You're blocking the light now, and there you go. You, please don't sit on the book, please. Please don't sit on the book. Please don't sit on the book. Come on, kitty cat, let's go. You're okay, come on. Why don't you go back to sleep? Okay, he's... I do need the book, though. Can you give me the book? Can I have the book, please? Thank you, cat. Okay, there we go. The Philippines. <laughs> let's flip through. 
through this and look through some nice pictures with there he goes okay all right now that everything's rumbling because the cat left look at this shot look at this that's so pretty what a nice photograph and this too that's pretty cool beautiful beach physical map sorry for the loud car outside there's a red light outside my apartment so loud cars tend to stop there Let's, there you go okay this says this is a tabuli woman in her traditional dress there are many 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 different cultures throughout the philippines all with their own unique style and sometimes language this is in metro manila this is um, makati it says one of the 16 cities that make up metro manila beautiful picture of the flag but we'll talk more about that in a minute look at this photo this is so it's so high up look at all the clouds and the, the earth there the horizon these beautiful beautiful bright green islands and the coral awesome the beach let's see this is Rui Lopez de Villalobos who named the Philippines there's a beautiful beach physical map here the beautiful sunset red sky at night sailors delight gorgeous mountain tops look at the houses and here is Mount Apo up here in the distance the highest point in the Philippines oh, so these are the chocolate hills there are these really oddly shaped mound hills that um, during I guess the fall they turn brown it looks like big lumps of chocolate and here are some terraced farms uh, where there's you know not a lot of arable land up in the mountains so the uh, ancient people carved their own rice fields out of the mountains there's a gorgeous gorgeous beach and oh this is so this is tall volcano it's I think one of two places in the world where there's an island in a lake, on an island, in a lake, on an island. <laughs> Let's see, a beautiful waterfall. It says this is Pang Sanjan Gorge National Park. A very devastating typhoon and the after effects of that. And another one. This is in 1991. It says. Here's a scientist, probably a seismologist. No pictures. So here's the earthquake I was talking about. I was right. 7.8. Lots of destruction. And this is a picture of a mudslide from 2006. And here is Mount Pinatubo blowing up. It says it. Uh, the atmosphere cooled the globe about 0.9 degrees Fahrenheit or 0.5 degrees Celsius guy's cleaning all the volcanic ash off his car from that eruption here's a map of the ring of fire you can see all the volcanoes and how the tectonic plates move around and create earthquakes and push up the land and creates volcanoes this is Magellan's cross so when Ferdinand Magellan landed in the Philippines he apparently planted this big cross because you know that's what <laughs> he did um, apparently this is possibly a replica, um, but it's in Cebu City. You can go and see Magellan's big cross. It's been preserved. Another beautiful, beautiful picture. The forest, little lake, waterfall. So pretty. The national flower, which is called the Sampaguita. It's a type of jasmine flower. And coconuts. So the Philippines is actually the world's largest exporter of coconuts, so it's a very important industry. A tarsier, very, very tiny little monkey. It says up here somewhere I read it that it, they're about the size of a human fist. So, so small. This is a carabao, a type of water buffalo, which is used for plowing and basic farm chores. Here's a big snapper. Philippine crocodile. There's our rooster friend just in time for the birds. 
I saw her screen. It says it's the world's tallest flying bird. And here is the Philippine eagle, the national bird. I believe it's the largest eagle. It doesn't say here. I read that somewhere. Probably in another of the books I'm going to read to you guys this week. Look at this little sea turtle. How sweet. You're so pretty. It's been selling seashells by the seashore. Perfect. Here is about Tupataha Reef. Some of the fish and the coral there. Some native archers, it looks like. Let's see, it's Ata Hunters. It says the Atas are thought to be descendants of Kayao Man. I hope that's how you say it. I hope it's not Kalao. I'm pronouncing it the Spanish way. Some more terraced farming landscape. And here is Magellan getting defeated by the Lapu Lapu tribe. This is the guy that replaced him after he died. This is Juan Sebastián del Cano. Oop, we can't see. Juan Sebastián del Cano. Who wound up circumnavigating the globe because Magellan was killed in the Philippines. Spanish exploration and colonization. So, here we go. You can see Magellan came in here and was killed. Del Cano took over. He went down here. Then back here to Spain. Via Lobos in 1542, all around here, and Legazpi in 1564, sailed up. Let's see, oh nope, that's, sorry, that's, no, that is Legazpi, right? Yes, because that was Magellan, this is Legazpi, who sailed up. And this dotted line is the Spanish East Indies Territory. Here's Jose Rizal, um, who sparked the big revolution against Spain. Here's Fort Santiago, which was built by Legazpi, and where Jose Rizal was kept prisoner. Emilio Aguinaldo, big important leader for independence. This is from the Philippine-American War. Manuel Quezon, who was president during the Japanese occupation, so he basically ruled from exile. The Japanese taking over. It says this is Tojo, the Prime Minister of Japan. World War II in the Philippines. So here you can see some of the major battles. The biggest one being here, the Battle of Luzon, from January to August 1945. And all these big battles up here. This is from the Bataan Death March. And here are some of the Hook rebels in jail. This is from Ang Maxese, who's credited for ending the Hook Rebellion. A really beautiful picture from Metro Manila. And here is Ferdinand Marcos with Richard Nixon. Birds of a feather, right? So, Imelda Marcos was very, very famous for having, like, thousands of shoes. So when she had to flee the country, she had to leave a lot of them behind. And now they're in a shoe museum. And here is Corazon Aquino, after becoming president. This is a photo of people cheering once they learned that Marcos had fled the country. And this is Imelda Marcos. She actually returned to the Philippines after her husband died and was elected to Congress. She tried to be elected president, but failed both times she tried. Let's see. Joseph Estrada, mayor of Manila in 2013 when this book came out. Um, he was a movie star before he became mayor. This was the president at the time this book came out. Um, this is Benigno Aquino III. So the son of Benigno Aquino and uh, Corazon Aquino. This guy's voting. And this is Malacanang Palace, um, which was yes, built in 1750. There's another picture of Benigno Aquino III. And the vice president at the time, probably going to pronounce his name wrong, so I just won't say it. And here is the flag. So let's read about this. It says, the national flag of the Philippines has a band of royal blue on the top and scarlet red on the bottom. 
The blue symbolizes peace, truth, and justice, while the red stands for patriotism and valor. On the left side of the flag is a white triangle. In the center of the triangle is a golden yellow sun symbolizing unity, freedom, and democracy. The sun has eight primary rays which represent the nation's first group of provinces that started the 1896 revolution against Spain. Near each point of the triangle is a five-pointed yellow star representing the country's three main regions, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. The flag was first displayed in 1898. Let's see, this is Lauren Lagarda, who was a congressperson who fought for environmentalism. The regions of the Philippines, which I believe has changed since this came out. I could be wrong, but this isn't the map that I was studying. A picture of a coalition of political parties working together. Some pictures of a Manila outdoor market and the suburbs against the cityscape. All the pictures of Metro Manila remind me a lot of LA. Like they don't look like LA, but they just have a lot of similar aspects. A map of Manila, and this is the National Museum of the Philippines. Oh, that's a good picture, too. The farmer down here with the big volcano in the background. Awesome. Their currency is the peso, the Philippine peso. There's a fisherman fishing, a resources map. Say with lots of cereals, cash crops, and tropical forests, and lots of minerals. The big commuter train, gorgeous beach, and this is one of the popular modes of public transportation. It's called a jeepney. This guy is building a thatch roof. And a population map, so you can really see the purple parts where the most people live. The yellow being the more sparsely populated ones. This picture is actually from New York City. It's a Filipino man and his very adorable daughter at an Independence Day parade. A map of all the different ethnic groups throughout the Philippines. I told you there's a lot. Field trip to Rizal Park in Manila. They're on their cell phones. <laughs> Working hard at school and reading the newspaper and candles at the church look at this, it's really nice Christmas lights it's so cool and this is an All Saints Day tradition where they touch up the tombstones of their loved ones this is a passion play where they reenact the death of Jesus Christ ooh, this is the largest church I believe, I believe, <laughs> the largest church in the Philippines, the Iglesia Ni Cristo. This is a Muslim rally in support of peace. I didn't really touch on what happened to the Moro Revolution, but it's pretty much just the Moros pushed back against the Spaniards, then they pushed back against the Americans, and they pushed back against the Japanese, and they pushed back against the Filipino government, it's it's still a thing, but not as big as it was. There's been a lot of peace talks and negotiations and compromises. Prayer during Ramadan. Really gorgeous fabric he's weaving. It's really pretty. And painting some pictures. And this is from an outdoor play. Some of the traditional dances. It's the Bayanihan. Oh, and this one is so cool. If you can look up some videos of this dance, it's called the Singkil. And they dance in between these bamboo rods that people like move around. It's so cool to watch. It's so hypnotic. Beautiful ballerina. Lea Salonga who we all know is the singing voice of Mulan and Princess Jasmine. This is Jake Cyrus prior to his transition, very famous Filipino singer. If you watched Glee, you saw him on that, the, the, the bad seasons of Glee, but we're not going to get into that. 
a really cool traditional instrument called a kuling ta kulin tang. Looks fun to play. <laughs> Very beloved musician named Freddie Aguilar. Comic books. It's free comic book day. The best day. <laughs> and this is from a movie called Small Voices. Manny Pacquiao. Most easily the most, most, most famous Filipino right now. Manny Pacquiao. And these guys are doing some martial arts called Arnis, maybe? Look at this guy. <laughs> Look at him. He's ready to go. I've never seen anyone more ready for anything. On their scooter. <laughs> ready to go. She's got her Hannah Montana backpack. Perfect. I love this picture. Oh, that's so pretty. Look, they're playing ping pong. The roosters out, the gorgeous flowers. It could be a painting almost. It's so pretty. These are fried bananas. They look like little cocktail wieners. I'm gonna have to try to find fried bananas because I can't even imagine what these would taste like. I don't know. I really love bananas, so. Picnic. And here is adobo. Oh my gosh, so Filipino food is so delicious. Adobo is so yummy. My favorite is lumpia, though. Oh my gosh, lumpia is so yummy. Beautiful wedding. And a very cute baby over to Dimple. <laughs> and the opposite, a funeral procession. And here's a Chinese New Year celebration. And we've got some kind lady with maybe her grandma, probably. This guy's putting on some traditional clothes known as a barong. And some kids in a rainy day. Oh, and that's the end of our book. Close that up. Put this here. Let the loud car pass. <laughs> Goodness, there are a lot of loud cars up tonight. I don't know what it is, but anyway. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a very good, 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 good night. Good night.